Ernest Fleetwood Pullen, born August 10th, 1880, member of the 159th Battalion, died May 7th, 1951. He was a recipient of the Distinguished Service Order. I was happy to discover that Ernest Fleetwood Pullen was not killed in action, and I was also happy to discover that there were happy endings in World War I. Edward Osler Vass, born March 23, 1892, 15th Battalion, died of influenza November 23, 1918. Researching his story was a memorable experience. Charles Duncan Bremner Green, born August 14, 1897. He served with the 164th Battalion and the 150 Squadron of the Royal Flying Corps. Uh, he died October 3, 1941. And, uh, he was, he was a recipient of the Croix de Guerre of Ecfam, and researching his story was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. James McCraney Chisholm, born October 1, 1892, served in the 18th Canadian Infantry Battalion, died July 14, 1927. He had his left index finger amputated after a shrapnel wound. He played so many important roles in the war, and it's nice to be able to tell his story. Benjamin Whitney Hilmer, born November 1st, 1898, served in 20th Battalion, died May 12th, 1988. His mother had both sons go off to Europe. Um, I'm glad that both him and his brother survived, and they will never be forgotten. Miss Frances Appleby, born September 30th, 1874, served in the 198th Battalion died April 4, 1916. He was a barrister of law. It was sad to learn that this individual died before he was able to go overseas. William Joseph Condor, born October 28, 1895, served in the 5th Battalion, died May 21, 1915. Being able to tell his story was very intriguing. Hugh Andrew Carson, born on January 25, 1893. He was in the 55th Battery of the Canadian Survey Section. He died in 1976 at 83 years of age at the Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital. He worked as a flash spotter in France, and I like him because he wasn't a conventional hero on the front lines. Howard Mahoney Gorman, born April 21, 1894, served on the 26th Battalion, died November 6, 1917. It was very interesting to do research. George Alvin Myers, born April 28, 1898. He served in the 42nd Battalion and died December 15, 1919. His right leg was amputated, and researching my soldier really brought the war alive. Ernest Orman Lever, born January 3, 1896, served in the 123rd Battalion, Royal Grenadiers, uh, died June 16, 1961. It was interesting to look at files from more than 80 years ago. Hugh Gordon Monroe was born in 1897. He was in the 15th Battalion and died on October 9, 1916. He was always optimistic in his letters and it was very moving to read about his life. George Mark Chisholm, born May 18, 1896, of the 15th Battalion, died February 4, 1971. He was known as Brock and he was very exciting to research and it was really cool to learn about his life because he was such a neat guy. Arthur Melville Monroe, born July 3, 1898, served in the 4th Battalion Canadian Machine Gun Corps, died an old, old man, uh, got shot in the general back area. Um, I love talking to his family. Orly Allen Joyce was born on September 16, 1892. He served in the CE, and the date of death is unknown. His brother, H Harold Alton Joyce, also served in the World War I. It was very interesting researching about him. William John Fitzsimmons was born on May 31st, 1892. He served with the 76th Battalion and then was later transferred to the 1st Battalion where he died on September 23rd, 1916 at the Battle of Somme. His name is in the Vimy Memorial and I think that's pretty cool. Donald Roy McKay, born June 30th, 1883, served with the 4th Canadian Mounted Rifles. He, he died December 5th, in 1915. He was part of the active militia before the war and it was also very interesting telling his story. Charles William Snyder, born April 19, 1896, 
served in the 38th Battalion, died June 2, 1916. I have become very close to my soldier. George Allen McGiffin, born December 8, 1881, served in the 24th Battalion, died August 27, 1918. He received a gunshot wound at Corselet, being able to tell his story is a life-changing experience. Ernest Wilson, November 26, 1893, 3rd Division, Signal Company, date of death, unknown. It brings me great pleasure to hear that Ernest Wilson returned home. Alexander Meekham Deniers, born February 7, 1899, served in the 164th Battalion, died on September 2, 1918. I can only hope to be as selfless as this young man. Frederick Dwight Coop, born January 14, 1885, served in the 14th Battalion or the Royal Montreal Regiment. He died on June 12 or 13, 1916. He only fought in battle for five or six days. Even though his contribution was small, he still was able to help Canada to a victory. John Edgar Bellier, born September 16, 1889, served in the Manitoba Regiment, 1st Battalion, date of death unknown. Even though he didn't fight, he was one of the CBDs, which means he basically set up tents and cared for the soldiers. And even though he wasn't on the front lines, he was a soldier that still contributed to the war effort. Charles Edward Cornwall, born December 4, 1894, served in the 5th Battalion Canadian Machine Gun Corps died November 30th, 1917. It was really interesting to learn about someone who grew up in the same town as me. It saddens me he never returned home. Ernest Albert Barabank, born January 5th, 1885. He served in the 116th Battalion. Died August 28th, 1918. I will never forget about my soldier in his life, and I will forever keep his story in my heart. Jack Telfer Bowerbank was born February 23, 1894. He served in the 116th Battalion and died on July 23, 1917. He played the clarinet in the Oakville Band and was called Peanut by the school boys. He showed such bravery and dedication to our nation and not enough thanks can be given to him. Charles Terry Carson, born March 31, 1896, served with the 40th Battery of the Canadian Field Artillery died in Florida in 1978. He suffered from trench fever and it was quite a challenge to recover.